everyone, my name is Savannah and we are back in Pangea Park after who knows how long. Pangea Park is our sandbox park in Prehistoric Kingdom that's really only had one episode so far, I think. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, kind of forgot that this existed until I was looking through my save files in Prehistoric Kingdom and realized I had big plans for a sandbox park and had started one and I'm really happy with how everything's turning out, but then I just never built anything again and it was kind of the forgotten park. So here we are back in Pangea Park, very excited. Today we're adding a little aviary in the entrance area for both the Mycoraptor and the Arctiopteryx. Hopefully I got that one right, I haven't practiced that pronunciation in quite a while. But basically the two little flying prehistoric animals that are available in the aviary enclosure that's just a placeable item in prehistoric kingdom. Much like the exhibits in Planet Zoo that they've added, you can make the entire surrounding of the aviary null and so you don't see it and all you get is these just dead tree branch looking pieces and the little birds fly around all over these little sticks and take naps and just stay in a confined space within what would be that exhibit. And so I'm just building up and around the entire thing. This is a fairly quick build today. It really only took me probably an hour and a half or so. Just threw this together very quickly, looking at a reference picture of a modern building just to kind of fit in with the modern architecture of Pangea Park, I did have to re-familiarize myself with exactly what I wanted to do with this park, but I'm treating it much like I treated River Rock Zoo in Planet Zoo, is that the modern architecture style is very easy for me to build in and I find it very satisfying. There's lots of sharp corners, lots of 90 degree angles, and it's just an overall easy style in my opinion to build in some of these games and because Prehistoric Kingdom is still lacking, you know, a lot of different pieces and the build mechanics I think are still being fleshed out just a little bit or maybe I'm just still getting used to them. It's a build style that I find easiest to build in uh, when building in this game, which is perfect because Pangea Park fits in with that architecture very, very nicely. You can see we did a kind of modern-esque zoo entrance if you caught little glimpses of it. And if you haven't caught the first episode, which I'm sure is like nine months ago or something like that, I haven't even looked yet, but it is way, way long ago. Um, that's kind of the style that we started in. So my idea for this building is that it's going to be probably like a main little hub for the park and for keepers. It's probably um, maybe a staff area combined with, actually no, maybe not just a staff area. It's probably like a food prep area for many of the other little exhibits across the park. They probably have little aviaries scattered throughout the park that we will or may not add. I haven't really decided yet because these two animals are the only animals that are currently available in the little aviary. So anything that we built after that would be uh, just, um, what's the word? Like not imaginary, um, implied, <laughs> that's the word. They would just be implied. So we wouldn't actually have any animals in them. But this would probably be the building for the staff that took care of those little aviaries scattered throughout the park where they would store food and prep their food and bring the animals back if they needed to be kept in quarantine for any reason. So that's kind of this main building here. Um, it's pretty accessible to the guests, but I think it would obviously have like its door locked or some something like that. So guests couldn't just like barge right in. Um, and I'm trying to make it pretty looking because it is kind of a center focal point of the main entrance area of the park. So I did want it to be not only functional, but also pretty. I think across from this, uh, towards the entrance side, I think is going to be an area for our first like food court slash shopping center area. Many zoos and parks have, you know, like their gift shops and a, and a food area right at the entrance of the park. We already added bathrooms in this entrance, so we're good there. 
So that's where I was thinking maybe the next episode, I don't know. I never have too much motivation to build things that don't involve animals. And even this build is a bit more architectural than I normally get because I really like building open, naturalistic, lots of foliage, lots of rocks, uh, exhibits. And this is a little bit removed from that since it is mostly a building and there's very little to the actual habitat itself. Um, but my main point in that is that I do find it hard to find inspiration, uh, when building just buildings. So like a food court or a shopping center or a gift shop or something like that. So We'll see how I feel and hopefully I don't forget about this project all over again um, because that's a little embarrassing to forget an entire project. But I've been wanting to jump back into Prehistoric Kingdom more and more and you guys have had wonderful support on many of the videos that I've released recently. Our uh, Paraceratherium exhibit went live and you guys have been wonderfully supportive on that one. So thank you so much. And if you're just finding me for the first time, uh, with Prehistoric Kingdom content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to be a better YouTuber and remember to actually suggest that before the end of the video. So here I am about halfway through trying to remember. So I appreciate you. I see you. Thank you. Um, but we are just foliaging. Foliaging? Is that, can we make foliage a verb? Uh, we are placing foliage all over the inside of these little exhibits. I ended up placing one next to the other just because they are a bit small on their own. And so I really wanted it to be, I wanted there to be more exhibit space. And in a building like this, I envisioned that they might have like two, maybe three or four exhibits back to back. Um, but I uh, didn't want to make it quite that large, just working with the size of the actual exhibit item in the game. Um, but that way we could put the Microraptor and also the Arcteopteryx <laughs> next to each other in two separate little aviaries, but they do share a little howdy wall. There is um, a great mesh. What is the word? I Mesh? Metal? Uh, in between them so they can't actually interact with one another, but it is an open air uh, barrier so that they can hear each other and look at each other and all that kind of stuff. I end up putting a little planter here to kind of separate the main path from like a little shoot off area where you would go to watch the uh, aviary birds fly around um, just to kind of get, you know, the people stopping to look at the animals off the main path and out of the way of traffic. However, the guests absolutely do not respect the fact that I put little fences up and you might see in the end cinematics and glamour shots that they walk all over my planter. It's incredibly rude and I don't quite know how to stop them. So it's something that we're just going to have to deal with. I also tried uh, closing my park and the people refused to leave. Again, very rude. Um, the guests in Prehistoric Kingdom, I think, are very much not finished and really don't do much. Um, so maybe that'll get better in the future. But for now, they're just going to go trompsing all over my beautiful planter and in our plants and all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to have to ignore them for now. But I do use a combination of like the coastal, the temperate, and even some of the tropical plants, I'm really just using the ones that I find uh, look pretty and varying them for height and density and all that kind of stuff to make it look like a like a planned planter, but kind of overgrown in a way. Like I wanted there to be a lot of variety. I do leave two blank spaces, which I then put in these signs here for both the Arcteopteryx and the Microraptor. And that way we obviously have some education about the animals that are in the exhibit. I also do put a little exhibit sign or a um, education sign on the side of the actual exhibit for both animals. And that way there's just, you can't miss it. Education, wherever you turn, you can't not learn about uh, our animals in the little aviary there. Um, I really like on that note, the education signs that uh, Prehistoric Kingdom's devs have put together are so detailed and so cool. I like them so much. They're really pretty and well designed and they just add that next level of detail to your exhibits because they look like true, real animal signs and uh, I love them. They're great. 
We're just finishing off the roof here. I decided to kind of uh, opt for the easiest path, path of least resistance, and I did a flat roof. Um, it's it's kind of a shortcut. It's kind of a, a way of cutting corners, but I think it turned out great. And for this build in specific, I think it actually does match. I do add a sloped roof to the actual aviaries themselves. And I feel like it kind of helps contrast between the flat roof of the actual building, giving it a little bit more shape and dimension with an arched roof or not an arched roof, but a sloped roof. Pitched roof, I think is what it's actually called. A uh, pitched roof on the actual aviary itself. Um, and yeah, overall, I'm really happy with how the build turned out. We are almost done. There's only like six more minutes in this video. We're just going to plant some more plants and add greenery around, uh, making sure that I get a good picture to make the thumbnail nice and pretty is basically all we're doing now. And uh, then we put our animals in. And unfortunately, with the roof that I picked, originally I was going to do grading instead of like a solid pitched roof. Um, but again, I kind of opted out for the easiest option and just picked one of the, um, like patterns from what is available on the default stuff, which I, I do think looks really good. The only downside is that it makes the enclosures very shaded and very dark. So for terms of like a YouTube video and screenshots, it's not the best, but it works. And I ended up leaving it because it just makes it more realistic. In my mind, you'd want your animals to have some sort of solid roof on at least part of their exhibit, in this case, all of their exhibit. And you can see sun kind of sneaks in from the sides and things like that. So they still do have the option to kind of go sit in the sun, but for the most part, it is pretty shaded. I decided to add some plants on top of here because I realized that the exhibit itself is a little bit too tall and it was poking through the roof. So I just decided to make it kind of like a little overgrown vine thing uh, on the roof just to give it, again, some more detail, but kind of hide those little sticks pointing up through the top of the roof. And I actually like it a lot. It looks really good. I should have added more now that I'm thinking about it. I should have added like more vines growing down to the floor or across that front door into the planter on the other side of the building. I think that could have uh, looked nice, but you know, maybe updates for another video. Um, but yeah, just foliage. And that is, that's pretty much it. It was such a short little build. I did it on a, uh, a Sunday afternoon. And for the first time, I think in months. This is one of two videos that I completed today. And if you're watching this right when it goes live, you will also be getting a franchise mode uh, episode for Mesa Garden Zoo in Planet Zoo on Friday. So again, the first time in months that I've had two videos scheduled in one week ahead of time. Um, so I'm starting to get back on top of content, which just feels uh, amazing because I have so many ideas and I enjoy playing these games so much, but life has just kind of gotten in the way recently. What I'm doing here is I'm making like an implied little feeder. I really couldn't find anything uh, that like, I don't know, looked like they're meat eaters, right? These guys are carnivores. Um, I kind of just put these plants to make it look like some some sort of food, whether it be seeds or fruit or meat. I actually kind of forgot that they're probably meat eaters. But anyway, I couldn't find anything that was like the right texture for that. So I just kind of threw some color in there. But those are what those are meant to be is like little raised platform feeders for the birds. And I think they turned out really cool. Um, the scaling obviously makes a lot of things really uh, achievable in this game that wouldn't be otherwise. And so I really like how they turned out just quickly throwing a few pieces together for a little bit more detail adding a little awning here. And then that is, that's pretty much it, to be honest. I really want to try to get this up on the workshop as a blueprint or a prefab for you guys, but I am really struggling with like the grouping system in a prehistoric kingdom. I just kind of haven't quite gotten my rhythm with it. So this building is a hodgepodge of build groups and is a pain in the butt to select the entire thing. So I'm going to have to go through and see if I can't figure that out and get it all selected in one so that I can upload it as a prefab and then get it up on the workshop. Because in terms of the building itself, it would be a really easy building for you to just kind of plop down in your park and play with it. 
Um, it's just going to be me formatting it for uh, an easy to plop down build for your parks. So hopefully I don't forget, um, but that's what I'm gonna try to do. And we're on to our glamour shots, our B-roll, our little uh, uh, shots of the actual final build. I probably could have added just a little bit more foliage in these, but I wanted to keep it relatively simple and relatively open because these, these animals do fly around and they do kind of clip through the foliage that I placed already. I didn't want to overpack it because I still wanted to be able to see them sitting in their enclosure. You can see that's where it fits in our park, just to the right of the entrance, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's such a cool little building. Um, very simple, not a lot, whole lot of uh, extra details and things, but I think it, it starts to round out our entrance plaza just that much more. Um, and again, I'm really happy with it. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do next, whether that be a food court area, which I can tell you right now, I'm not honestly looking forward to that all that much. Um, but we'll see if you made it through this far in the video do me a favor hit the like button down below and while you're there double check that you're subscribed you can follow me on any of my other social media accounts all those links are down in the description below and until next time I will talk to you guys in the next video bye